Okay, uh, please give us your name and organisation and ask a question. Uh, wait for mics to reach you. Um, it is more complicated in the event of no deal. Um, and it's more complicated in the event of no deal because it is not as simple as saying that in the event of no deal, there's just one path that monetary policy could take, because no deal would very unusually for an economic shock be an instantaneous shock, not just to demand, which is what everybody is used to seeing, uh, but a shock to supply. Uh, there will be supply capacity in this economy that will become uneconomic. Um, now, the degree to which that happens will partly be influenced by no deal preparations, but not totally eliminated, as I just said, by those no deal preparations because the fundamental economic trading relationship has changed and it will take some time for this economy, which is one of the most flexible economies in the world, uh, even this economy, it will take some time for it to adjust its supply capacity, which was oriented in export terms, largely towards Europe, to be oriented uh, in different directions. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, the financial system is ready for it. We have been preparing for this for years, um, you know, both in terms of what we can do but also the institutions themselves. Um, but a no-deal situation, broad brush, is one in which um, sterling is likely to be lower, um, in which inflation is likely to be higher for a period of time, um, and uh, the economy is likely to slow. Now, the degrees to which all of those happen vary on many factors including, by the way, what no deal actually means, because one of the uncertainties in all of this is different people mean different things when they talk about no deal. Um, when we do our contingency planning at the Bank of England, no deal means no deal. Um, no deal means there's no side arrangements. No de deal means that um, the trading relationship instantly goes to WTO uh, uh, tariffs uh, and, uh, and um, uh, product standards, um, and then it has the uh, associated economic effects. So, If there are people in Downing Street who think that if there's a no-deal Brexit, this institution will deploy a massive monetary stimulus, are they wrong? We will do what we can in those circumstances to support jobs and activity, but there are limits uh, to what we can do. Ultimately, uh, this is about uh, our best contribution is returning inflation sustainably to that 2% target. Um, and it is an unusual circumstance to have a major supply shock. And that was not the case uh, after uh, the referendum. It was only a prospective supply shock, not an actual one. In no deal, it will be an actual one. Can get the mic to Helia to see this. Thank you. I think we all recognize that um, uh, multilateralism is under some strain. Uh, the global trade system is, uh, is being buffeted by uh, a series of actions and threatened actions, um, and this would be part uh, of that, uh, uh, at least part of that narrative. And it's not just a narrative, it's a reality, a reality that businesses are dealing with um, and is creeping into um, the way businesses are thinking about how they organize themselves, particularly how they organize uh, their supply chains. Uh, so. It has effects, it would have effects beyond just, the, in, in my judgment, uh, and in the, I believe in the revealed preferences of fellow, fellow policymakers, uh, beyond the, um, the GDP weighting, if you will, of the UK economy, which is considerable, but you know, it's not the largest economy in the world. Enjoy a summer break, and we'll uh, see you next time.